It's hardly a revelation to say that fast fashion is problematic. We've all seen the exposés and social media rants, yet the allure of brands like Sheen, which recently invited influencers in a move that backfired spectacularly, continues to grow, evidenced by their staggering profits. How is it that a company like Temu affords a Super Bowl ad? The catchphrase, I'm shopping like a billionaire, encapsulates the irony of fast fashion's success. Despite knowing better, we can't seem to stop buying. The dichotomy between the price we pay and the true cost of fast fashion is stark. The industry not only generates colossal waste, 92 million tons of clothing annually, but also obscures the labor and materials involved. The majority of fashion brands maintain a veil over their supply chains and the fair payment of workers. We seldom question the feasibility of a $5 garment, ignoring the human effort behind it. Fast fashion, epitomized by brands like H&M and Zara, was born from the desire to democratize runway trends. But e-commerce has exacerbated this trend, sacrificing sustainability and ethics for speed and affordability. The psychology behind fast fashion's appeal is complex. It taps into our desire for newness and variety, encouraging a throwaway culture that is unsatisfying and environmentally destructive. Welcome to Psych Insight, where we view the world through the lens of psychology. Today we're delving into a topic that impacts us all, consumerism and the illusion of happiness it brings. If you like this content, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and turn on notifications for upcoming topics. We're constantly surrounded by advertisements, sales, and new trends, all pulling us towards the tantalizing world of shopping. But what really drives us to buy? Why do we find satisfaction in acquiring new possessions? How does our brain react when we make a purchase? And perhaps most importantly, how does this culture of consumption affect our happiness, our mental health, and our environment? By understanding the psychological mechanisms at play, we can break free from the consumerist trap and make more mindful, sustainable choices. So, buckle up as we embark on this insightful journey into the psychology behind consumerism, starting with one of the most prevalent examples of our time, fast fashion. Have you ever wondered why a new purchase feels so good, yet that feeling fades so quickly? In our modern world, we find ourselves drawn toward the glamour of fast fashion, where the allure of trendy clothes at affordable prices seems irresistible. But does this constant cycle of buying and discarding truly make us happier? Or is it a mere illusion, a fleeting rush of dopamine that leaves us yearning for more? The concept of dopamine, often dubbed the feel-good neurotransmitter, is central to our understanding of the appeal of fast fashion. Dopamine plays a key role in our brain's reward system. When we snap up a bargain or a trendy item, our brain rewards us by releasing this neurotransmitter, giving us a sense of pleasure and achievement. This is the shopper's high, a state of euphoria that fuels our love for shopping. Fast fashion thrives on this mechanism. By constantly introducing new collections and limited time offers, it triggers a sense of urgency and scarcity. This rapid turnover of trends keeps us in a loop of continuous buying, where the thrill of anticipation for new items fuels the dopamine release, reinforcing a pattern of instant gratification. This business model not only encourages repeated purchases, but also conditions us to equate happiness with the accumulation of material possessions. However, the happiness derived from buying fast fashion is often short-lived. The instant gratification may lead to buyer's remorse as the novelty wears off, and many of us come to regret impulsive purchases. The fleeting nature of fast fashion trends means items quickly lose their appeal, which in turn sparks dissatisfaction and a desire for more. Furthermore, the disposable nature of fast fashion items often results in them being relegated to the back of the wardrobe or ending up in landfills. This cycle of waste and environmental harm raises ethical questions and can induce feelings of guilt, especially among consumers who are conscious of the social and environmental impacts of their choices. In essence, the pursuit of happiness through material acquisition, as exemplified by fast fashion, underscores a broader societal struggle to distinguish between transient pleasure and enduring contentment. True happiness, psychological studies suggest, is more closely tied to experiences and personal relationships than to the hoarding of material possessions. So, it seems the joy of a new purchase is not a lasting happiness but a fleeting dopamine rush. Fast fashion has found a way to tap into our brain's reward system, but what are the implications? When we dive into the world of fast fashion, we're essentially stepping into a dopamine-driven carnival. The bright colors, the latest trends, the limited time offers, they're all designed to entice us, 
to stimulate that pleasurable dopamine release in our brains. This is the secret sauce of fast fashion. It's not just about selling clothes. It's about selling a feeling, a fleeting moment of joy. You've probably heard of the term shopper's high. It's that euphoric feeling you get when you score a great deal or find the perfect piece to add to your wardrobe. This is dopamine at work. It's our brain rewarding us for our actions, providing a sense of satisfaction and pleasure. It's a powerful feeling, and it's what keeps us coming back for more. Fast fashion retailers have honed in on this. They've mastered the art of the dopamine hit. They know that by constantly changing their collections, by creating a sense of urgency and scarcity, they can keep us on the edge of our seats, always anticipating the next big thing. It's this anticipation, this desire for the new and novel, that fuels the continuous cycle of buying. But here's the catch. In the world of fast fashion, it's never about the garment in your hands, it's about the next one. The next trend, the next collection, the next dopamine hit. The clothes are transient, but the desire for more is constant. This relentless cycle of consumption can have serious implications. It conditions us to associate happiness with buying, with the acquisition of material goods. It perpetuates the illusion that the key to happiness is just one more purchase away. But as we'll discuss in the next section, this kind of happiness is fleeting, and the pursuit of it can lead to a host of negative consequences. In the world of fast fashion, it's always about the next purchase, the next dopamine hit. The dopamine rush fades, the clothes lose their appeal, and we're left wondering, was it worth it? The fallout of fast fashion is a multifaceted issue that extends far beyond the initial thrill of purchase. When we indulge in the lure of fast fashion, we often experience buyer's remorse. The low-cost, trendy clothes that looked so appealing in the store can quickly lose their charm once the novelty wears off. We might find ourselves questioning our impulsive decisions, feeling a sense of dissatisfaction that the items we bought are no longer as desirable as they once were. This feeling of regret is a common symptom of the fast fashion cycle, and it's one that can lead to a persistent sense of dissatisfaction. But buyer's remorse isn't the only fallout from our fast fashion habits. The transient nature of fashion trends means that our wardrobes are constantly in flux, with items quickly becoming outdated. This constant churn contributes to a disposability culture, where clothes are consigned to the back of the wardrobe or even thrown away. This waste not only has a significant environmental impact, but it also feeds into a continuous cycle of consumption and disposal. Then there's the issue of cognitive dissonance. As we become more aware of the ethical implications of fast fashion, we may feel a sense of guilt about our purchasing choices. The knowledge that our consumption habits contribute to environmental damage and unethical labor practices can create a psychological conflict, adding to the negative emotions associated with fast fashion. The true cost of fast fashion extends beyond our wallets, impacting our environment and our mental well-being. The fleeting happiness it provides is often overshadowed by feelings of regret, guilt, and dissatisfaction. As we navigate the complex world of consumer culture, it's important to consider the full impact of our choices, not just on our bank accounts but on our minds and our world. Is the happiness we derive from material possessions real, or is it just an illusion we've been conditioned to believe? This question brings us to the heart of the psychological impact of fast fashion. Countless psychological studies have delved into the nature of happiness, and a consistent thread runs through their findings. True happiness is more closely linked to experiences, personal relationships, and self-development than to the accumulation of material possessions. The joy we derive from buying a new outfit is momentary, a fleeting burst of dopamine that, while pleasurable, does little to contribute to long-term satisfaction. Fast fashion, with its rapid turnover of trends and constant influx of new items, feeds into a cycle of desire and dissatisfaction. You buy a new dress, you feel good for a moment, but then the next trend comes along, and suddenly what you just bought feels outdated. The desire for the new item builds, you give in, you buy, you feel good, and then the cycle repeats. It's a relentless pursuit of the latest styles that leaves little room for lasting contentment. Moreover, this cycle does not fulfill our deeper emotional or psychological needs. It doesn't contribute to our personal growth or help us form meaningful relationships. Instead, it often leads to feelings of emptiness and dissatisfaction. After all, you can't form a meaningful connection with a dress that's going to be out of style in a month, can you? The dopamine rush of a new purchase quickly fades, leaving in its wake a desire for more, for the next trend, the next high. 
So what does this mean for us as consumers? It means we need to reassess our relationship with fast fashion and rethink our understanding of happiness. True happiness is not fleeting or temporary, and it is not caused by objects we acquire. So how can we break free from the cycle of fast fashion or excessive consumerism and find a more sustainable path to happiness? This question brings us to the crux of our discussion, rethinking consumption. A key part of this involves becoming more mindful about our purchases. Rather than mindlessly chasing the latest trends, we should consider investing in fewer but higher quality items that stand the test of time both in terms of style and durability. This doesn't mean that we have to give up on fashion, but it does require us to be more discerning about what we buy, where it comes from, and how it's made. Supporting sustainable brands, those who prioritize ethical manufacturing practices and use eco-friendly materials can be a great way to align our fashion choices with our values while also helping to reduce the environmental impact of our consumption. But rethinking consumption extends beyond just what we buy. It's also about how we perceive value and derive happiness. We've seen that the dopamine rush from buying new clothes is short-lived and often followed by feelings of regret or dissatisfaction. So instead of seeking happiness in material possessions, we might find it more beneficial to invest in experiences that offer longer-lasting fulfillment. Experiences like traveling, learning a new skill, or spending time with loved ones not only create lasting memories, but also contribute to our personal growth and development. They help us build stronger social connections, enhance our knowledge and skills, and can even boost our self-esteem and sense of achievement. All factors that contribute to our long-term happiness. In essence, rethinking consumption is about shifting our focus from having to being, from possessions to experiences, and from the short-term dopamine rush to sustainable happiness. It's about recognizing that our value and happiness as individuals are not defined by what we buy or own, but by who we are and the experiences we share.